Morning folks. Uh, I did two yesterday on the 10 by 8 inch MDF, 3mm MDF. Just one coat of, uh, of uh, gesso, white gesso. Or sketching really. It will be permanent, or well, it is permanent. It forms a nice seal. I don't rub the uh, or sand the surface of this before I prime because the primer itself lifts the the fibrous surface of the M of the MDF. It, it might be just this patch of MDF. Uh, I've got nine, I did have nine four foot by three foot sheets of it. It's lovely. It's quite light in weight. It's pretty tough. It's not as tough as the two millimeter, which is much more compressed which is really, really durable, but it's very cheap and my paintings, you know, are uh, as simple as I can make them. Uh, keep it simple, stupid. Simple motifs, trees on the horizon, simple foreground, big sky. The bigger the sky, the less foreground you have to worry about. But then, with practice, your trees, I mean your, your skies will get better and more dramatic. I don't aim for realism in my painting, I just, my aim is just to enjoy painting. And all my, or the vast majority of my paintings are imagined. But I have a repertoire in my, in my brain, for what it's worth. Plenty of oil. So here we are, linseed oil with a bit of dryer in and just just go for it, let's just go for a bit of red. And then a bit of blue, a bit of paint grey. Right, just, just get some paint on, just cover. You can, this will dry, well go touch dry after a while because of the dryer in the paint. I want to do something similar to the one I did yesterday. Um, maybe make some sense. It was uh, inspired by the film Great Expectations, the Charles Dickens one. It was the original one, the one with um, the late great John Mills as Pip, who takes some uh, nourishment to a, an escaped convict who became his benefactor. Great expect we have great expectations. And it all ended well. But the bit at the beginning was where Pip is uh, taking the uh, nourishment to the convict on the Essex marshes, which is uh, along the Thames. And I might put a bit of a, the opposite banked for the Thames estuary. Uh, well actually it's probably, no it's not the Essex marshes is it? It's the uh, Thames salt marsh because great expectations. Uh, Rochester. Rochester's on the south bank of the Thames. Well, we're, we're calling it Essex Marshes anyway. And I'll. Now we a bit, bit of a. Burnt Sienna. Okay, you see we've got a sky already, but we don't want to leave it like that. We want to put a bit of paint grey, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of oil, but not too much oil.
Oh, no blue in that, I think. Okay, well, that's a good start. It's a very, very simple. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't got anything in mind. I'm just putting paint on. So don't be intimidated by this. Turn that up a bit higher. Let's get that nice light horizon. Well, we're still in lockdown. There's pressure building though against against it now. Let's go on YouTube and have a look and see the blogs and the comments, which I do a lot. Get some nice light. The light on the horizon will is a euphemism, isn't it? Light on the horizon. I've gone back to uh, Burnt Sienna for a while. Oh, I do prefer it to the light red. All right, now we'll put in uh, some of the blue grey. That might not show up on the uh, camera. It's just the other side of the Thames. So this is... Okay. Now the rest is going to be... It's going to be the marsh. There wasn't any detail on that horizon. I want to put some, some blue though on the on the horizons blue trees or blue grey trees to give a contrast to the warmer landscape oh drinking me bovril uh, Right, okay, let's uh, blue paint grey and a bit of white. Oh, it's got to be darker than that. There we are, let's straighten up that horizon now. Clean the brush and be a bit of toweling. The colours the colours are cadmium red, ultramarine, burst yellow, a bit of paint grey, cadmium yellow and the um, yellow ochre which I haven't used yet. Now I want to get the uh, the stipple to show the top of the grasses, the marsh grasses. I might even put in a bit of a reflection of that uh, sky there. See if I soften that bit.
Right, uh, a good stipple brush. Is that one very cheap? All my stuff is uh, cheap, well, apart from the uh, graduate brushes, but they're not that very expensive. I'm using a homemade palette. Uh, the paints are student quality. So marsh, marsh grass. I love marshes. I'm still at the beginning of learning to paint the things. But we just get what a contrast. A bit of Oops. I'm just using the edge of the brush and I want to get a soft edge. Then we can put some dark shadow in there, in the grasses, just catching a bit of light. Okay, uh, not going to clean the brush. Shadow in the marshes, so you've got to imagine there's water in here. And to show the water, you've got to do something dark and then just put some water in. So each painting you do takes you just a little bit further along for your goal. I mean, I'm just assuming that everybody likes to paint landscapes. It's all I paint. Well, I'll get some nice dark in the foreground here now. Quite a warm colour, a mauve. Just mixing the red and the ultramarine. Okay, no, minimum of effort. We've got a sky. We need to uh, that's better. Got a bit more light in, in the top here. Nice and soft. Right, okay. Oh, sun's out. I'm just going to pull the shade down a little bit, otherwise, we're going to have a light area and a dark area. But the sun every day is just that little bit higher in the sky. 
So it doesn't stream in through the windows, it comes down from up above. Drinking me bovril. Right. Uh, we're putting some light now in there. I'm not going to make this too dramatic. Right, okay, that'll do for a start. Now I'm going to take a brush and go into some stark trees now, catching the light though. Now let's try, try burn sienna and, and well, burn, burn sienna and paint grey. A stipple. Try some paints grey. More dramatic. Soft. Okay, now we can highlight underneath there. Plenty of yellow ochre in this. Oops. Well, I'll get some dark in there now. So, Payne's Grey, bit of, I just missed the Payne's Grey, the red, and the burnt sienna. Putting this dark here so that I can counter change some lighter stuff over it, like I did yesterday. Maybe uh, I could get some light on the edge of those trees to counter change with the background. But there they go. I'm going to put some greens in now. So blue, red, yellow, oil.
right, let's uh, find what buses I'm using. I think I've only used, oh no, there we are, that was the brush I was using. Now we'll get this uh, Get a knife if I can find it. Uh, oh, here we are. My little trusty. That's not great, it's a... Uh... Right, okay, that's... So we can um, just bring some darker colour up into that. Okay, it's a little bit difficult to separate the background. I've probably got a little bit too dark to start with. But uh, I think it shows up. So so we've got uh, marsh grass at the back, the, the tops of the grasses. Uh, but we want to just get... That's a bit better, a bit softer. It's almost like the wetlands of Morton Hall Park. Take away the trees, you've got the houses. Well, we're, we're reflecting the, 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 the lighter sky, so that is okay. But I put no detail in. I've just used the edge of a, of a rough old brush to give the to give all those separate. To you, how, how do you paint grass? Do you paint every blade of grass, or do you do what I do, an impression, by using a brush that that uh, separates into all single strands? It's all done like that. It's very easy, but I, but I don't think we always believe sometimes. It can be that easy. I would say it was a lot easier than uh, watercolour painting because you, you, you can't easily change. Well, that'll do. You can change to a certain extent, but, but you're very limited here. You can just go scrape it off if you don't like it and just go again. Right, I'm going to let that go now. Any more fiddling and, and it, it will be something different. I'll put it in a frame. Turn that off. Go through a lot of masking tape, but it's, it's a lovely way of fixing your painting to your to the board.
actually fits. Okay, well let's have a have a look at it. I'll put it up on the uh, on the easel and go up. So there we are. The lot of this stuff at the bottom is has gone behind the frame, but uh, you get the idea. We've got a, a big sky. Uh, cloud, quite a lot of drama going on. We've got the distant sh shore across the Thames. Uh, we've got some some grass with these rough trees. Very similar to what I did yesterday. Uh, but good practice, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.